um, I don't know what happened. I think it's network because I found that the Facebook is um, other other apps are, are loading fast, but Facebook is so slow loading. So I don't know whether it's Facebook admin doing their stuff, but I will continue doing my stuff as I've been sharing with us about your blessing and your God. Talking to those who still believe in God and trying to open their eyes to see that there is no God, but their faith, their belief that God exists. And that make, that's what makes them stupid because you have to be stupid to believe that something that does not exist, exists. Or to buy something that you cannot see. Or to, to claim to receive something from someone you cannot see, you have not seen, and you cannot see. So, and um, as I was saying, that if you are God, have gender, you are God, have body parts, you are God, have house or mansion, you are God, have clothes or robe, you are God, have weapons of war, but you cannot see this guy. Something is wrong with your brain. You are stupid to tell me that. If your God has power to bless you, but he has no power to show himself, you are believing in bullshit. You don't supposed to. And that's where I was saying that God is Satan. So this is part two of this message. So let me use it to talk about God being Satan according to the Bible. I'm not the one that's just saying it. But you know that Satan means what? Adversary. That's what he means. Somebody that is always against. And if you read the Bible, you find that God is always against people, against peace, against unity. Even when Jesus spoke, Jesus said that he did not come to bring peace, but sword. He said a, man, a man's enemy will come from his household because of him, Jesus. And he said you must hate yourself, hate your family members for you to be his disciple. So God, or Jesus, is the actual Satan, according to the Bible. And I was saying some, um, quoting uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15. So let me read it, since this is part 2. So I have some time to read. And let me also drink water. God cannot stop me from drinking water. He cannot. Can your God do that? Let me give that God five seconds. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. Okay, let go stop me from drinking water. He cannot. You say, oh, he's a loving God. He's giving me a long road. That's stupid. <laughs> a loving God. All those, all those people that are worshiping him, that are Muslim, um, Boko Haram, Fulani is man, and the other terrorist groups are killing God don't God God don't love them, right? So, in First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse three, hear what this Satan Satan said to Saul. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman. Infant and nursing child, ox and, sh and sheep, camel and donkey. Now, believers, those who believe in the Bible, if this thing, if you say this thing happened in their area, or they will say it's the devil, it's Satan, it's the work of Satan. That's what they will say. And that's exactly what this Satan called Jehovah, what this Satan called Yahweh, what this Satan called Allah did in that book they believe. All these three books have this in them. Old Testament. <laughs> Prophets. They have them. It's, this Satan sent somebody to go and kill people, both man and woman, both young and old. And the same people that believe in this God will be talking against abortion. The abortion is murder. You can't believe in the God of the Bible and be against abortion. You, are, you must be a hypocrite to do that. That is what he did. And for you to know, evil comes from evil. It was God that created evil, according to the Bible. And
and the God said that He is the one that created. It. You hear what what chapter sixteen said? The same First Samuel chapter sixteen, twenty three, verse twenty three, chapter sixteen, verse twenty three. He said, and so it was, whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul, the evil spirit from God was upon Saul. Evil spirit from God was upon God, upon, upon Saul. Then David will, will took a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become, uh, become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit from the Lord the evil spirit from you see they try to reverse it in King James version you will see evil then in other version they begin to put depressing depressing spirit depressing spirit so depression is from God evil spirit is from God God is Satan according to the Bible who sent evil spirit to people Satan God is Satan you say it's not true. Okay, let's hear where, what Isaiah said. That Isaiah that said he saw the Lord lifted high. His 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 train his train fills the temple. Hear what Isaiah said about God. Isaiah forty five. I think maybe Facebook is blocking people from seeing me, but <laughs> I will still download and share it. All right, but no problem. We must say what we know. This is what Isaiah wrote. He said, God said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity, evil. God is the creator of evil. God is Satan. He said, I, the Lord, do all these things. God is Satan. There's no way you can argue yourself out of that mess. You cannot defend God successfully. You cannot win in any case where you are defending God. You will see, you will fall down face. God is evil. So I am calling you that believe in God, but cannot see this God to deliver yourself from that mental illness. Deliver yourself through the knowledge of, embrace the knowledge of factual truth. That is the only way you can deliver yourself. I cannot deliver you. No one else can deliver you. You are the one that can deliver yourself. And I'm calling on you to wake up and deliver yourself. There is cure. For that mental illness you have, call religion, call faith, call Christianity, call Islam, call Judaism. All of them are mental illness. But there is cure. The knowledge of factual truth. I'm the living evidence. I'm the living witness that the, the knowledge of factual truth will cure you of your mental illness. I used to have that mental illness. Preaching God. Preaching Jesus. Think, thinking that I'm doing, I know what I was doing. I was called, I was ordained as reverend. I went to theological school. I went to Bible school. You're not talking about Bible studies, man. Even when I go for uh, went for missionary work, I was choosing to be teaching Bible school in that church among five of us that went. I was choosing because you cannot hear me and not feel the imaginary presence of God. You will know that this guy is anointed. As you can see how I speak now. I, do, I speak without fear because I know what I'm saying. The God of your whatever man of God you are following or the God you are serving cannot do me anything. I am evidence that God cannot do anybody good or bad. God is useless. I want you to know if you're trying to get any cure or any help in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Mary, in the name of Satan, in the name of angels, you will never get it. Your cure is only in seeking after the knowledge of factual truth. 
not knowledge of religious truth, not knowledge of political truth, not knowledge of personal truth, knowledge of factual truth. Factual truth is for everyone. It is not for particular group. It is not for particular person. It is for everyone. Just as the sun and the moon are for everyone. Are you ready to be free from the fear of God which will keep you in bondage of religion? You can never be free from the bondage of religion if you have fear of God. Because religion created God to keep you in bondage. That's why they tell you the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If that is true, there will be no church, there will be no religion building any school to teach you anything. Because the fear of God should impart wisdom in you. But it can never happen. You have to teach yourself. But the problem with teaching yourself in religion or in faith, you will always be learning, but unable to attain to the knowledge of truth. Or you will find yourself is in that circle, in that coven, in that court, in that religion, in that cage. Remember, I tell you it's a spiritual cage since you believe in spirituality. It has four rooms and each are interconnected. The first room is African spirituality. The second room is Judaism. The third room is Christianity. The fourth room is Islam. And they have doors through them. The only way to escape them, there is door above them. That door opens you up to the universe. You come out of that cage. Trust every belief system and live your life. Know that if you say you believe God is blessing you and you can show things that, that you call the blessings of God, then you need to see that God. If you say you cannot see that God, something is wrong with your brain. You need to be cured. And that's what I am doing. Spend your time. Do your own research. You can start with my wall. You can start with YouTube. You can start with Google. You can start with books. But the main thing is go after the knowledge of factual truth. You yourself verify what you had or what you read. Don't just believe only. No. You believe something, prove it. No religions will survive that two word. Prove it. No religion can survive it. No belief system can survive it. So it is it's time you survive that bondage. Free yourself from the bondage of fear of God, which has crippled many people, and they don't know the cause of their problem. At the root of that your problem is religion that believe in God. That's why you see Africans. They cannot rise up and resist their enemies, the evil ones, because their belief system tell them, leave it in the hand of God. God will deal with them. It's time you wake up Africans. Stop loving your enemies and start loving, uh, care, taking care of yourselves and live your life. You are the one that will bless yourself, not any God. You are the one that will free yourself, not any God. You are the one that will help yourself, not any God. Do it and have fun. Peace.